Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's been a little bit since I've done a video like this. I always plan on doing it and then I get really behind, but I thought the reasoning behind this video would make me actually go through and finish it. If you follow me on social media, you will already know about this as I've posted about it a lot, but I was lucky enough to attend the 62nd annual Grammy Awards this past Sunday. Now, before you ask, no, I was not invited as an artist, I wish. We'll get there someday, don't worry. But I was actually invited as a seat filler. Now, for those who don't know, one of the main rules at award shows is that every seat always needs to be filled. So the seat filler's job is to always fill a seat when a celebrity moves, or there's an open seat that needs to be filled. I wanna run down the whole experience. I actually was able to document a decent amount of what happened. There were some strict rules I had to follow. Unfortunately, I couldn't videotape everything, but I wanted to give you guys um, a sense of what actually happens when you're a seat filler, especially for a giant award show like the Grammys. And we up here, yeah. I didn't help Blake, but I helped Adam. I did Adam. Hello. Um. This is the Grammys? Big day. That's so it all started about two weeks ago when one of my friends uh, let me know about this website where you can basically apply to be a seat filler and I decided why not. My hopes were pretty low, but I just thought it would be a fun idea either way. And about a few days after I applied, there was an email sent that said over 30,000 people applied for these seat fillers and only 600 people got it. And that also made my hopes really low because the chances were literally like 2% that we would actually get it. And then I got the email that I was officially a seat filler for the Grammys. And oddly enough, my roommate also got it. Who knew that me and my roommate would both be able to do something that was only a 2% chance of getting it. For those interested, the website I use is called seatfillersandmore.com if you are ever interested in also being a seat filler. So got to the day of the Grammys on that Sunday, woke up super early, got ready, just wore one of the suits that I used to wear for prom and stuff like that, and we headed off. We pulled up to the check-in location and there was already about 100 people in line. We out here. We waited in line for about 20 minutes, checked in, waited in line again for about another hour and 15 minutes. Made some new friends in the line, it was very fun. And once all the seat fillers were checked in, we got a number, we got a little ribbon showing that we were actually a seat filler, and we got a wristband. Once we were all checked in, we walked over to the Staples Center, and actually the entire block around the Staples Center was blocked off. Which was crazy, because we were walking through the street to get over to the Staples Center, and there was no one around, which was really weird and really kind of crazy. We waited in line some more to go through security at the Staples Center, and then we spent some time waiting inside the Staples Center, kind of in the food area, where they have all the concessions and stuff. <laughs> So it was about 5.15, about 45 minutes before the Grammys were about to start, and six of us got sent down to the main floor. And this is where I got super lucky because there were still hundreds of other seat fillers that were had to wait or either go in the sides, and I was lucky enough to actually go down onto the floor. Spent a little more time waiting. It was still a crazy experience actually seeing the entire stage of the Grammys because I've watched the Grammys literally every year for the past five or six years, and seeing it in real life was crazy. I don't even know any other word to describe it other than like mind blowing. At about 10 minutes before the show, they took a line of us out of holding and brought us up to the front few rows and we ended up getting actually sat in the third row. Literally the third row, we were so close to the stage. We were just chilling, waiting for the show to start and all of a sudden I look behind me and I see Oh, there's Lil Nas X coming to sit in the row behind me. Oh, there's Ellen coming to sit right behind me. Oh, there's the entirety of BTS sitting behind me. And unfortunately, about 30 seconds before the show started, I was asked to move out of my seat because someone else had to sit there, and I was forced to run back and find a different seat. Little did I know that 10 minutes where I was sitting, Tyler, the creator's mom, was sitting next to me. I was dumb and did not know it was her until he brought her on stage when he won Best Rap Album. Experiences like this I did not think I would ever have in my life. So the show 
continued. It was so cool to watch. Fun fact, while we were waiting outside in line, the guy who played Beck in Victorious walks right by us. No one, no one in the line notices anything. I'm like, did we just not see him walk by us? And then he walked by us again and I was like, do you not see this guy just walking right in front of us? So that was also cool. I got to watch Lizzo perform Jonas Brothers. Billy, Demi Lovato, so many different artists. It was so cool to see a bunch of people live that I've actually never seen in person before. At one point, I was sitting a few feet away from Louis Capaldi. At one point, I was trying to sneak through a crowd and I ended up leaning on Khalid for about 10 seconds. Tyler Crater at one point walked right past me to go accept his award. By the last hour of the show, I ended up moving up really close to the stage in about the fourth row. I look over to my right and I see, oh, I'm in the same row is Lil Nas X. And then I look farther and I see, oh, there's Ariana Grande talking to Lizzo casually. And then I look over further, I'm like, oh yeah, there's Billy trying to talk to Ariana over there. And then I look to my other side, I see, oh, there's LMA talking to Khalid. Oh, there's Rosalia coming down and talking to Khalid. Like, so many things were happening that my brain was just trying to process it all and it really couldn't. Especially because my whole YouTube channel is working with these artists and mashing them up together. And seeing them all together was really surreal. <laughs> I was shown on national television a few times in the crowd. There's a few times you, where you can pick me out. I'll put up the picture of my friend documenting me at the show. Honestly, so much was happening that I kind of actually wasn't really caring about who was winning the awards at that time. I was just really invested in everything that was happening around me. And I feel like a few of the biggest takeaways that I got from this whole experience of being at the award show was how normal celebrities are. Cause you know that they're normal people, but they're still always under this microscope and you only see what they post online. Even when celebrities meet their fans, they kind of are in that mode of, oh, I'm meeting fans, oh, I'm doing this stuff. It was just so crazy to look over and see, oh, there's Ariana making jokes with her friends, talking to Lizzo, hugging Lil Nas, clapping for Rosalia, just like stuff like that, that you would never see, like never a normal person would see because either celebrities are on camera or they're meeting fans and they kind of always have to be positive. The commercial breaks were also something I'd never experienced before either, which was crazy. Anytime we would go to commercial, seat fillers would be moved around, I would have to keep moving, I would see all these celebrities would be up talking to each other and then there's 30 seconds till the show, it was a madhouse. Everyone was scrambling, everyone had to find their seats, everyone had to be clapping when the show started. People were running to make sure they weren't standing up in the aisles by the time dancers had to come in or by the time the camera was panning the audience. Actually, after the show ended and I went back to the main lobby that we were waiting at earlier, I got to introduce myself to Mikey, Scooty, aka Social House, Tommy Brown, and Victoria Monet, all of which were on the production team for Ariana Grande's album, Thank You, Next. I got to meet all of them. It was so cool. It was more of me talking at them, but I just got to tell them how much I admire them. I'm a music producer, so they're a big inspiration for me, so I got to tell them that. I didn't ask for a picture because I it didn't seem like the right place and the right time, but it was still so cool meeting them. And then, yeah, the Grammys were over. I took the Uber home and now we're back to normal life, sadly. It was definitely one of the craziest experiences of my life and I could never picture myself doing that a year ago. So I'm super grateful for the experience and I'm so glad I got to do what I got to do. And I'm so glad I was able to document a little bit of it for you. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to follow me on social media so you can be updated with me when I do cool stuff like go to the Grammys. I really want to continue doing videos like this. So so stay tuned for possible videos in the future. And that's it for this video, and thank you for watching. Peace out. Do you like my setup? My awful tripod? The tripod consists of a board game, five X so many Xbox games, a tissue box, and some Wii U games. I'm gonna be putting the, uh, the outtakes. That's not going in the outtakes. Oh, now he's actually not. Wait, why did I say that?